Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, welcome and welcome back KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently trading down 1.22% to 23.076. Ethereum is up 0.44% to 1647. Turning to DeFi, we can see DeFi is down 1.58% in terms of total value locked to 87.78 billion. What we're going to do is a quick run through of the crypto market looking at the different sectors. This is DeFi. There's a lot of negative news circulating around the globe. Nancy Pelosi recently touched down in Taiwan. Nancy Pelosi sat down in Taiwan. This has China's CCP party up in arms, literally. We always have to bear in mind that global events do impact the stock markets and the crypto market. We're going to look at the charts to see what the actual outcome has been across financial markets and of course across crypto as well. We've seen recently that gold has been rallying. When there's geopolitical instability, gold is a safe haven. And gold going up tends to suggest there's some problem somewhere in the world. The recent increases in gold look to be tied to the Taiwan visit. As a former gold trader, you have to be aware that when gold spikes up, it usually decays rather quickly. This is the real nature of geopolitical shocks. Looking at the front page of the Wall Street Journal, Pelosi arrives in Taiwan defying China warnings. In response to this, China has actually stepped up its military exercises around Taiwan. Another thing that you see here when looking through all of these news headlines, there's a lot of talks about layoffs. One thing, the Fed needs to increase interest rates to cool the economy down, but it has a second mandate to sustain full employment. If people are losing their jobs and they increase interest rates, that goes against the second mandate of full employment. Price stability and full employment are the two mandates. The next FOMC meeting is in about 49 days and the probability of a base rate between 275 to 300 basis points is 58.5%. So we're looking at a 50 basis point increase in the next FOMC meeting. This was up to 71% just one day ago. So they're favoring more so a 75 basis point increase. It's really good to keep your eye on this statistic. When we look at precious metals, we saw that we had a gold spike recently. That started to turn down. Palladium and platinum have also started to turn down. What does this basically mean? It means the geopolitical shockwave that was sent through the precious metal markets looks to be subsiding. I wanted to give you a better look at the US markets or the major indices on the markets, the US markets. What we can see when we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see it's under resistance. By the way, if you ever see anybody looking at the chart like the NASDAQ or any other major indice and they're not on log, they don't understand technical analysis. This may be a bit of a harsh thing for me to say, but I see it all the time, especially when people zoom out. It drives me nuts. For example, I've seen some influencers actually go back in time and talk about these indexes and they just do it on an arithmetic scale. That's an equal absolute change. From my lecturing in first and second year statistics, we just don't do this. You need equal percentage changes when you're looking at anything that is like this pattern over time. When you see something growing, for example, from, it looks like Bitcoin, doesn't it? Say $3,300 up to 17,000. You need it on a log scale. That's what you need. You can see Bitcoin here in the background. That is on a log scale. What would it look like on an arithmetic scale? It would look like that, a completely different animal. You cannot tell support and resistance levels on arithmetic scales on Bitcoin over time. You need it on a logarithmic scale or else you just literally don't know the mechanics, the exponential dynamics of Bitcoin. They'll be hidden from you. 
Let's have a look at the major indexes. What we can see is the NASDAQ is under resistance, but is being supported. When we look at the SMP, it's being supported, but still under resistance. When we look at the Dow, this is not such a healthy momentum. Now, how have I drawn these trend lines? I've done it with the CTKS method, and we draw a lot more than just a single trend line, but I want to show you something. This is an equal comparative analysis between this point and this point, this point and that point, this point and this point, this point and this point, and the line is extended. What you see is the NASDAQ is upholding its support. Price is just happily bouncing along like a ball, up and down, up and down, and we know price moves in waves. What are we seeing with the S&P 500? We're seeing weakness, weakness, and not as strong as the NASDAQ. What do we see with the Dow? The Dow can be very, very sensitive. We can see it's not obeying this particular trend line, like what we see with the NASDAQ. What about the Russell 2000? The Russell 2000 is doing quite well, but we're getting into an area of resistance. What happens at areas of resistance? The sellers come in. That's where they take, the buyers take profits, and the sellers are strong. This can create negative price momentum. And the one thing that we look at is Bitcoin's gravity, this blue line. This is Bitcoin's directional price action. You can see how it's actually moving with all these indices. One thing to keep in mind, and Masterclass students, you get this live chart in TM6. The NASDAQ 100 is coming into a very, very strong support level at 12,847. This 12,847 level is really, really important. If the NASDAQ breaks, breaks down from there, breaks down from there, puts the brakes on, we would expect lower momentum down to the 12,700, the 12,468 number, or the 12,270 number. So just bear this in mind. What is the Bitcoin price action telling us right now? It's saying to us, I believe in the NASDAQ. I believe the prices will go up. And why do I say that? Because when we look at this price, it's getting over a resistance level. Ken, how can you tell? We've been looking at the recent retracement in Bitcoin, and we've noticed these tops 29 to 31 just coming down here. We've had a first pass across resistance, and this has created a local bottom at this 32 point around that level of support 22.810 that we've been talking about for a little while. So the concept here, we've made a, finally, we've made a low. And this is, of course, a higher low. This is a low, this is a low, but this one, this one, 32 is higher. And that's why we call it a higher low than 24. What we actually see, price has managed to break across this resistance. It's seeking to consolidate. So long as it can keep this particular support line, that is from 24 to 32, we would expect to at least reach B, if not reach C. But we know that things can turn on a dime in the crypto market. This could be a false breakout or a false reversal. We may need another one down. So just keep your eyes on it. But it looks so far, so far, so good in terms of the market actually turning around below the surface. If you were to look at the market like this, you would say, yes, this is a pretty red market. I don't think there are any opportunities there. Sanjeev shared a really fantastic little meme. <laughs> Self-doubt, like these little guys are going up the hill to their goal at a snail's pace, but the snail got there first. Oh, naughty snail. Maybe it would be easier if we put this down. What is that? Self-doubt. Ah, self-doubt and self-sabotage. You can do without those two. That's why before placing any trade, we have the CTKS Creed. As crypto technical analysts, we subscribe to the CTKS Creed. That primes us for profitability in the crypto market. And this is simply just a list of things that we say to ourselves. I know the universe wants me to succeed. Every day, I show kindness, integrity, and gratitude. I know opportunities and life reset daily. I am worthy. I go slow to go fast. I start small and scale with Borsog. Life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. I am dedicated and committed. 
I win or learn and never blame. We can see that we've bypassed this level of resistance playing in from 29 to 31. That is a really good positive sign. We can see the NASDAQ futures in the background. They're pointing towards more negative. But we understand the NASDAQ as a, real, a very, very key level of support. We would anticipate a technical bounce up. But if we don't get this, if it collapses down below it, we'll need to pay a lot of attention because that would suggest more negative price action and momentum is to be expected. Let's have a look at what the Bitcoin options market is telling us. And we can see the options market is predicting max pain level tomorrow of 23,000, followed by 23,000 for the next day and also for the end of the month. Basically, the options market is expecting flat behavior. Does this mean that's where price is going to go? You can see here the price basically pulls Max Payne up or pushes Max Payne down. Please let me know in the comments, where do you think Bitcoin's price will be headed? Do you think it will just obey, for example, Max Payne levels and be around the 23,000 for today and tomorrow and the next day? Or do you think something else? Really love to hear your thoughts. Turning to the longs and the shorts, we can see the shorts have been rampaging up, now starting to come down. What about the longs? They have been leaving the market, did a bit of a blip up, and now they're getting a little bit more reluctant. We can see reluctance on both the short side and the long side in the derivatives market. So let's check out liquidations. There's been 193.03 million in liquidations across the past 24 hours, occurring across 72,940 positions. Over the past 24 hours, about 56% of total liquidations have been long liquidations. What about the past 12 hours? About 61% short. It went to the, the, the other side. Ooh, the other side. What about the past four hours? It's nearly 67% long. It's gone to the other side again. What about the past hour? Whoa, I caramba. Nearly 91% long liquidations. We're seeing price coming down at the current time. When we look on a daily basis, we can see the longs have been marginally more liquidated than the shorts yesterday. And the day before that, the longs got hammered by the shorts. The day before that, the longs got hammered again. And what about that? Well, the day before that, longs and shorts were about kind of equal, but the longs got nabbed. And the day before, the shorts. And the day before that, the shorts. And the day before that, the shorts were hammered. You can see it's always changing around. The longs and the shorts, they're always having a fun game of tag, liquidating each other. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. In our community, we focus on positive excellence and maintaining real wealth foundations. We understand that money is the result of being somebody that has the power to actually withstand success. That sounds pretty strange, doesn't it? Power to withstand success? Success brings a lot of challenges with it. And when you build your real wealth foundations, you build your character through integrity, loyalty, decency, gratitude, kindness, courage and honor, all of these things, strength and boundaries, you'll find money is attracted to you. Money is not something you go after. Money is something that you attract. It's many, many people have the reverse psychology. They're always chasing money and they wonder why they can never get it. Beardy shared this really beautiful meme. The little kid asking the old guy there, I asked a wise man, tell me, sir, in which field could I make a great career? He said with a big smile, be a good human being. There's a lot of opportunity in this area and very little competition. Oh, he is indeed a very wise old man. Oh, thank you. Inside the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass, you first learn how to mark up your charts with a completely new method that captures crypto's exponential price action. Then we look to outside trends, checking the markets, doing many, many more times what we do in the community channel, and then going back inside the crypto market, understanding that opportunities reset daily, rule 28, 
and enhancing your pattern recognition, rule 109 and rule 32, finding the market's focus. And what we do before we pull the trigger on a buy or a sell, it's really important to master emotional control. That's why we focus on real wealth. That's why we don't make money our master because it's a terrible master, bad master. Many people make money like the precious, like Golem. Many people approach the crypto market and want money like poor old Golem wants the precious. He must have the precious. We know it's not the precious. The precious is not here. It's everything but that. Money and success come from positive excellence and failure comes from negative excellence, doing the opposite of these things. One thing that we always focus on is Bitcoin's gravity. And what I've done is to come down to the one hour. I want to give you a more insightful picture as to what Bitcoin is doing and has been doing recently. We can see this is a low, this is a low, but this low is higher than that low. That's why this thing is called a higher low. And when you draw a chart up here, a support level, you can see that Bitcoin's price is above support. I love you doing it with your eye. Eye charting is a very, very powerful technique. And what do you see here with Ethereum? Please let me know in the comments. What about XRP? Well, that's above support. Look at Sol. Oh no, poor old Sol. What happened? Sol. It's getting whacked by Bitcoin's gravity. And this is what happens when you find Bitcoin moving down. You will see an over exaggeration and an under exaggeration of up and downward percentage moves. So that's why we're really curious to find potential cryptos that could be doing the opposite. What about fourth here? Oh, fourth is looking quite nice. In fact, I did some really good trades recently on fourth. I'll share those with the community. What about CTK? We had a bit of a spike up, but now CTK is following Bitcoin's gravity. What about Pond? Oh, something interesting. Pond is following Bitcoin's gravity. What about Rose? Rose is following it, but you can see the strength here in Rose. It's showing a lot of strength. What about XVS? XVS has not come down much. Remember what Sol did. Sol really tanked down. Is XVS doing that? No, it's not. Not at the moment, at least. What about Ape? And what do we know about Bitcoin's gravity as well? Bitcoin's gravity will set the directional percentage move in your beloved alts. You need to pay attention to it. Understanding where Bitcoin is going is critical for your success. For example, we can just look at this particular support line. Bitcoin is now testing that support. It's saying, hey, is this support real? Are you real or you are just a fake support or are you a real support? Being really supportive would be great for Bitcoin at this present time. In yesterday's episode, we were starting to get above this resistance line. But I said we can't call the bottom just yet because we don't have any confirmed pattern and we can see the rejections that actually occurred. The true bottom was at 32. We, if we just push this up, it wouldn't have been the real bottom. Now, what are we seeing here? We've seen a basic turnaround. We're seeing now a test of support and this test of support comes at a confluence too. 22.810 is a good support level. Oh, it's a good level, good level. And we've got this 24 to 32 support level playing out here. So we've got dual support levels playing in at the current price. So go Bitcoin, get away, don't go down, go up. We love it when you go up and we don't really like it when you go down. But of course, we never think so simplistically. We know that we control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. Because the market controls the return, we use Borsog ANF as our risk management strategy. We always ask ourselves if this trade or investment goes against us, what are we going to do with our portfolio and that specific trade or investment? And what if it goes nowhere? Or what if it goes for us? We use Borsog ANF to do our risk management. I'd like to thank everybody for their fantastic comments and questions in yesterday's video. One thing that came up 
One particular question was asked in the comments yesterday, where do you put your stop loss with Borsog? Borsog is a market timing method to get you into synchronization patterns at spot with the market. You don't use leverage with Borsog. You shouldn't use leverage at all until you are professional because professionals hunt stop losses in crypto. If you need to know where to pop a stop loss, I would suggest just trading at spot to begin with. You'll actually understand how the market moves much more effectively. It's not about making money when you start. It's about getting the right tools, the right foundations, and then you will make money as a natural byproduct. Fortunately, we have a meme for this. Look at this little guy and thank you, Edwin. Edwin is just a legend when it comes to all these memes. Let's go. And then tick, tick, tick over time. Oh, the guy says this is useless. And then over time, you can see that green, that yellow, the green and yellow down here. And he's looking up and going, wow, that's what we do in all things in life where we are successful. A lot of people just want to rush. They want to sprint towards the goal line, never understanding that when you get there, you'll just get another goal. Just go slow to go fast. And as you're doing it, please bear in mind rule 219. Be kind to yourself. When you get into a trade and it doesn't work out to your expectation, maybe you didn't buy it when you wanted to. Maybe you sold it too early and you missed out on a huge move. Don't worry about those things. Be kind to yourself. What you'll actually find when you do Borsog, it's a mental acuity training exercise. You're trying to understand and interpret how price action relates to your own behaviors. Borsogging is very, very powerful. You can start small and scale. I recommend you start as low as you can possibly go. $1 on some exchanges will work. $10 on others will work. And it really comes down to your financial position. But just because you have a lot of money doesn't mean you just throw it all at a specific trade. A lot of people say that they understand rule 621, which is buy on red, sell on green, or Borsog. We call Borsog the price eagle. That's why you see so many eagles flying around in our beloved global family. A lot of people think that borsogging is really easy. After all, hey, let's look at a parallel. If you got your driver's license, you know how to park, right? You did the test. Well, so what about this person? They didn't park too well. And what about this one and this one? Just having a license, just doing the test doesn't mean you can do it in reality. That's why I developed the CTKS Masterclass because I wanted to share my 30 years in market experience just to do knowledge transfer. And to everybody inside the masterclass, active learning is so very, very important. There's an old saying, well, it's a bit of a joke, really. The man who waits for a roast duck to fly into his open mouth or her open mouth must wait a very, very long time. Success doesn't come to you. You go to it through your positive excellence. And what does this mean? This is literally all about rule 141. Go slow to go fast. And it applies to everything in life. Every time you learn, just think you're walking up steps of knowledge. If you walk up and examine each step, you're going to do well. If you skip steps, you're going to get to the top, but you'll have to go right back to the ground because your structure, your knowledge structure won't support the weight of your knowledge. And this is something that I had to deal with time and time again through the thousands and thousands of students that I have lectured over the years. I found that when a certain person gets to a specific level, for example, pulling the trigger on a trade, if they don't have real wealth and positive excellence, they'll get overcome by self-doubt and self-sabotage. If they don't know how to time the market, they won't be aware of opportunities. If they don't look into the trend of outside markets, they won't have a context what the crypto market is doing or where it could go. And if they don't have their foundations, well, the whole building will fall over. Over the past day, the crypto market has decreased in value by 1.68% down to 1.06 trillion. And it's really interesting to look at these charts over the past seven days. What do you actually see here? Just disregard Tether and USDC. These are stable coins. We don't look to fit trends to stable coins because they're supposed to be stable. 
And what about, oh, I sounded like Jerry Seinfeld. I don't want to go and see the drag. Oh, okay. Let's have a look at this. What do you actually see with Bitcoin's particular chart pattern there? What do you see in Ethereum? What do you see here with BNB? This is really good for your active learning. Please let me know in the comments. Looking at the greatest gainers in the top 100 over the past 24 hours, Kronos, CRO, <laughs> CRO up 7.3%. Optimism, very highly traded. If you ever looked into the depth of optimism, of op, you will see some really serious buyers and sellers in there. Very, very interesting to look at op. Up 5.38%. Rose, 5.25% up. Synthetics, 4.18% up. LDO, 3.78% up. And Trust Wallet, TWT, up nearly 3.7%. I just mentioned something about depth. Why would depth matter? Please let me know in the comments. Looking at the greatest losers in the past 24 hours, Theta leading the back of the pack, down 14.31%. Flow down about 10%. Waves 9.6% down. Chili's about 9.5. Yearn Finance 9.3% down. And Ravencoin 8.91% down. For the comments for this particular episode, I thought it would be really interesting to talk about meaning. What does meaning mean to you? How do you get meaning in your life? I think it's really, really important to discuss this. Does money actually give you meaning or you can find meaning independent of money? Money definitely gives you comfort. Absolutely. But what about meaning? Does it give you meaning? Please let me know in the comments. I think this is really, really good to discuss. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as a part of our globally extended KS family. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp. So if anybody contacts you pretending to be me on WhatsApp, they're a scammer. I don't like WhatsApp. I don't have it and never will. And thank you to all the CTKS ambassadors for assisting masterclass students and being wonderful people too. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and for being part of our global family. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the tax software I use and links to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.